And I think the first time it was only okay. The second time I was great. <laughs> and this time we have to top it, okay? Thank you all for being here. Before we begin, really, I want to thank Ralph Reed. He's been an amazing, just an amazing guy, an amazing support, a terrific man, and uh, it's a great honor to be invited and invited back so many times. And uh, I'll be here as often as I can, believe me, because I'm with you 100%. I also want to thank so many, uh, I've had so much support. As you know, uh, we've done very well with the evangelicals and with uh, religion, generally speaking. If you look at what's happened with all of the races, uh, whether it's in uh, South Carolina, I went there and it was supposed to be very strong evangelical and I was not supposed to win and I won in a landslide. And so many other places where you had the evangelicals and where you had the heavy Christian uh, groups and, and it was just, it's been an amazing, it's been an amazing journey to have, I think we won 37 different states and the support that I've had from you folks has been incredible, and I appreciate it very much. I happen to be... Uh, I happen to be Presbyterian, and uh, there's about three of you out there. But uh, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been really something, and some of my friends uh, that are in the room, I appreciate you being here. I want to really thank Jerry Falwell, Jr. He was right from the beginning. He's been such a tremendous supporter. Liberty, as you know, Liberty University. Pastor Paula White has been at right from the beginning. Uh, I've known her for so long, and she's a tremendous person, tremendous woman. Uh, Pastor Mark Burns, uh, I don't know if you've watched him on television, between him and Pastor Daryl Scott, these two guys are phenomenal. They have been so incredible. Robert Jeffress, who we all know and love, uh, he's been amazing. And in, in the audience, I think we have Richard Lee, we have uh, Jim Garlow, and we have Father Frank Pavone. Someplace they're in the audience, so I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here. And I have to say, though, the world is such a different place, even from when I started with this. We started 12 months ago, and, and uh, coming up, I just see where in France, they have a massive soccer tournament, something that's so important and so big, and they're thinking about maybe postponing it or canceling it because of threats and all the problems going on with what's happening with terrorism. And it's a very, very sad thing and a very sad place. And who would have ever thought our world would be in a position like this where that would happen? But yeah, you just see event after event, uh, radical Islamic terrorism is just you know, taking over, and we can't let that happen. We cannot let that happen. And if we're smart, and if we're tough, we won't let it happen. Just remember that. Okay. It's an honor to speak here today and discuss our shared values. I'd like to thank all of the wonderful Christian leaders and Christian voters who have supported me. We've had tremendous support. Here we are, and here are the goals, and I thought I'd put some of these together, and I did it just the other night because of this meeting, and I wanted it to come from me, from my heart. We want to uphold the sanctity and dignity of life. as the building block of happiness and success. So, and by the way, I know many, many very successful people. The happiest people are the people that have that great religious feel and that incredible marriage, children. It's more important than the money, folks. Believe me, I know plenty with lots of money and they're not happy people. <laughs> religious freedom, the right of people, of faith, to freely practice their faith, so important. Freedom of any kind means no one should be judged by their race or their color, and the color of their skin should not be judged that way. And right now we have a very divided nation. We're gonna bring our nation together. I win, we're gonna bring our nation together. The importance of faith to United States society. It's really the people who go to church, who work and work in religious charity, so important, and share their values 
These are the foundations of our society. We must continue to forge our partnership with Israel and work to ensure Israel's security. <laughs> Keeping people of faith safe from threats like radical Islam, whether protecting them here or standing by Israel, all of us need to confront together the threat of radical Islam. We have to do it. Now, Hillary Clinton, or as I call her, Crooked Hillary Clinton. <laughs> refuses to even say the words radical Islam. Refuses to say the words. This alone makes her unfit to be president. In fact, That's right. in fact, she wants a 500% increase in Syrian refugees to come into our country. No, no good. No good. No good. Can't do it. We don't know where they come from, where they are. We have enough problems right now. Here is some of what we can accomplish together. Appoint judges, so important, so important, who will uphold our laws, protect our Constitution, and protect the rights of all Americans. And, as you know, I put a list together of highly, highly respected judges, and you will see, and I think you've seen it, and I'm pretty sure you did, but a lot of people have really come together off that list. That's one of the most important reasons why we have to win the presidency. If we don't, it's going to be a whole different country. And by the way, these judges are all pro-life. Restore, 
respect for people of faith who dutifully raise their children, follow our laws and rules, and we have to really take care of them. We have to take care of our neighbors, because right now our neighbors are not being taken care of. We have to restore the rule of law on our border, in our government, no matter where it is, it has to be restored. And by the way, we have to pay great respect to our police and law enforcement. They're not being treated properly. So all of this includes tough new ethics rules to restore dignity to the office of the Secretary of State. <laughs> Which it hasn't had in a while, folks. Among being the worst deal makers I have ever seen, if you look at the Iran deal, truly one of the worst deals I've ever seen negotiated. <laughs> we will protect the right of churches to speak their minds on political matters free from intimidation. safe from radical Islamic terrorism. Here is what Hillary Clinton would do to our country. She'll appoint radical judges who will legislate from the bench, overriding Congress, and will, and I'll tell you, the will of the people will mean nothing, nothing. Her judges will abolish the Second Amendment and destroy the rule of law. She wants to abolish the Second Amendment. And I will tell you, the National Rifle Association, the NRA, two weeks ago endorsed Donald Trump. So I She will keep Obamacare in place, which puts medical decisions in the hands of government. Not good. Obamacare, we will repeal and replace. <laughs> she will restrict religious freedom with government mandates. She will push for federal funding of abortion on demand up until the moment of birth, which is where she is, as you know. She will undermine the wages of working people with uncontrolled immigration, creating poverty and income insecurity. Hillary Clinton's Wall Street agenda will crush working families. She'll put bureaucrats, not parents, in charge of our lives, and our children's education can't have it. She'll be trapping kids in failing schools. She'll plunge our inner cities into even deeper poverty, if that's possible. Hillary's agenda of taxation, and she wants to raise your taxes, big league, folks, big league. Get used to it, hear it. She wants to raise your taxes tremendously. Regulation, bureaucracy, government control, and open borders have economically destroyed our inner cities. Her policies will be a crushing blow to all poor people in this country, her education policies, her economic policies, her immigration policies, and her trade policies will plunge our poor African-American and Hispanic communities into turmoil and even worse, despair. Believe me, you look at what's going on. The Democrat Party has run the school boards and the police departments, and the city councils, and the mayor's offices in most of our inner cities, almost all of our inner cities. They've run congressional offices. They've horribly failed in almost every single community. In fact, you could actually say in every community. I'm going to turn things around. Hillary Clinton has jeopardized, totally jeopardized, 
national security by putting her emails on a private server, all to hide her corrupt dealings. This is the reason she did it, folks. It's to hide her corrupt dealings. She's now under criminal investigation. That was announced yesterday by the White House. I mean, it's criminal investigation. First time ever, by the way, a president of the United States endorsed somebody under criminal investigation. Interesting. She even appointed to the National Security Board someone with no national security experience. Instead, he was a donor, a recent donor, to Hillary Clinton's campaign, and also gave as much as $250,000 to his foundation. They all looked, they said, where did this guy come from? He made a contribution of $250,000. All of a sudden, he's on this very important and vital board. This position dealt with tactical nuclear weapons and had top secret clearance. And he knew nothing about it. Bill and Hillary made $153 million giving speeches to special interest groups since 2001. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. <laughs> These donors own Hillary Clinton. They own her. And Bernie Sanders was right about that, I have to tell you. If you work, it's true. And the bottom line is, I will be working for you. I just spent $55 million running and they took my money. Not easy. I just spent $55 million of my money running in the primaries. Other people spent many times that amount and they didn't do so well. Okay. But I work for you. I'm working for you. I'm doing this because I want to get back. I want to get back. I want to get back to work. Together, friends, we will chart a new optimistic course for America. We will put America first. When you look at our deals, our military deals, our trade deals, all of the deals, we don't put America first. I don't think anybody negotiating these deals even knows anything about what they're doing, and I don't think they care about America being first. I care, and you care, and that's the way it's going to be. And that's a big, big part of why I'm challenging Hillary Clinton today to replace her support for increased refugee admissions. We have to do it for a new jobs program for our inner cities. We have to take care of the people that are here. We have to temporarily stop this whole thing with what's going on with refugees, where we don't know where they come from. But we have to take a rest. We have to take a time out. We have to use the money to take care of our poorest Americans and work with them so they can come out of this horrible situation that they're in. We will restore faith to its proper mantle in our society. That's what we have to do, and we have to do that soon. We will respect and defend Christian Americans. Christian Americans. We will give parents control over their schools. So important. We'll uphold the values our founders gave us, which we're not doing now. We will work together to rebuild and restore and lift up everyone. Not a certain group, everyone, the whole country, we're going to lift up. We will make America great again for all Americans. And we'll do it together. I want to thank you. This has been a great honor. Amazing friendships I have in this room. Thank you all very much. <laughs>